Hi, I'm Eric Hansen. I'm going to talk about a package visual string distances.jl, which tries to answer the question, how similar do two strings look? And here we've got two pretty dissimilar strings, the word Julia turning into the word visual. Okay. Uh, so let's compare strings. One way we can do that is with the string distances package, um, which for example has the Levenstein distance that can answer how many single character edits you need to turn one string into another. If we do Julia and then Julia with a capital I instead of a lowercase l, it's just one edit. Um, and same with Julia with Julia with a capital Q instead of a lowercase l. Um, but Julia with a capital Q looks very different than regular Julia. And Julia, Julia with a capital I only looks a little different than regular Julia. So distances like the Levenstein distance don't into it, take into account the visual nature um, of how, how these strings look. Um, and there's lots of other distances we could try. Um, for example, a distance based on how many consecutive pairs of letters appear in each string. Um, but, uh, you know, all these distances are capturing interesting things about strings that are not um, their visual aspect. So, so how do we do that? Um, so visual string distances has this function, visual distance. Um, and according to that, the distance between Julia and Julia with the capital I is only 3.24, but the distance between Julia and Julia with the capital Q is 21.9. So, so that seems like it's doing something like what I wanted, um, but how do we know it does something reasonable in other cases too, and how does it work? So we just need two tools. We need a way to translate strings into images, and then we need a way to compare images. So the first one will be provided by GNU Unifont. Um, so this is a bitmap font that represents each character as a matrix of zeros and ones. And here I've kind of rendered it out with these hashtags and hyphens. Uh, and here we can see the actual bitmap for, for Julia. So it's a 16 by 40 matrix of zeros and ones. So it's kind of low resolution. Um, we could use free type abstraction.jl to render bitmaps from all kinds of fonts. Um, but it's particularly simple with Unifont because it, it already stores uh, the, the bitmaps. And it's simple and, and also quite comprehensive. Um, so here's five random characters from the ones that it supports. I kind of reach into the internals of the package to, to grab those and it can render them. And we can see that, you know, they look okay. They're, they're a bit simpler due to the low resolution, but it's, it's capturing, um, it's capturing these, these symbols. Okay. And here are the, the strings I mentioned originally, Julia versus Julia with a capital I and Julia versus Julia with a capital Q. So we can kind of see how they look here. So how do we compare images? The technique I'm going to use is optimal transport. It's an old technique that um, the imaging community has recently been, been using a bit for comparing images. Um, so look up Wasserstein GANs if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, and how does it work? So let's say we have some amount of stuff, A of X1 stuff at site X1. So this is a positive number. A of X2 amount of stuff at site X2 and so forth. And we wanna reconfigure it so that we have B of Y1 amount of stuff at site Y1 and so on. So the original example is with sand piles. We have these different piles of sand in some configuration. We wanna move them around to a different configuration of piles of sand. And of course, it costs some amount to move one unit of mass from one site to another. So it's C of Xi, Yj to move one unit of mass from Xi to Yj. And optimal transport is this optimization problem that says um, we want to minimize the cost of moving the mass such that we can go from our initial starting configuration to the final configuration. And so the subjective function says so our variable pi of Xy will say how much mass do we want to move from site X to site Y. And then the cost will be C of X, Y. And we sum that up to get the total cost. And then we constrain our variable pi by it. We have to start from the initial configuration and we have to end in the final configuration. And so then we optimize over our variables pi of X, Y to figure out how much stuff should we move from each site X to each site Y. Okay, so how does this relate to our problem? Well, if we have a black pixel in the third column and second row of our bitmap, then we could interpret that as one unit of mass at the site x1, which is just two comma three. And so in this way, we can translate our bitmaps into this language used by optimal transport. 
and our distance c of x, y will just be the distance, the Euclidean distance between these points. Um, we're actually going to have to do two modifications to this. Um, first, we're going to solve an approximate version of this problem um, so we can do it faster. This is a technique called entropic regularization. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to allow the creation or destruction of mass, but with a penalty. Um, so that we can treat the case when um, our starting and ending configuration don't actually have the same amount of mass. Um, so for example, what if one string is longer or has you know, bigger letters, so it has more black pixels than the other string, we're going to have to create or destroy mass to get between them. OK, so what use do these visual distances have? Well, for one, we can make GIFs. Um, this variable pi that tells us how to move, uh, move the mass around can, is what I use to, to make those GIFs. Um, but actually, my interest was in adding a check for new packages being added to the general registry of Julia packages to try to prevent the malicious impersonation of another package. Um, so there's two, con so the Julia package registry has an automated way of uh, registering packages. And one concern is that could be abused. Um, so someone could, try, could register a malicious package and then try to get people to install it. Um, and one way people might install it is if they make a typo and they end up at the wrong package. Um, so that's called typo squatting. And one thing we could do is add an edit distance-based check, maybe where the distance is weighted by the likelihood of making a typo to get from one package to another, um, you know, based on the, the configuration of keyboards and all that. Um, and another way that someone might install the wrong package is they could copy a malicious tutorial. For example, there could be a flux tutorial um, that, that you know, this person who, who's made this malicious package writes, um, and they could insert their package name, maybe FIUX. And we can see this little GIF, they're, they're pretty close, um, FIUX and FLUX. Um, and so to check for that, we might need a visual distance. So is this the right visual distance for an automated registry check? I am not sure. So human perception is actually a little bit different. For example, we mix up P and Q more than A and E, but this visual distance function says P and Q are further apart than A and E, for example. Optimal transport's a bit slow, though not prohibitively so, um, and there's several parameters and cutoffs that we would need to tune. And I was thinking actually maybe a perceptually weighted edit distance might be more sensible in the end. Um, we could actually use something like this optimal transport to get the weights for how different are different characters and things like that. The package for visual distance, print glyph, and so forth is in visual string distances, and the package with the underlying optimal transport algorithm is unbalanced optimal transport. All right, thanks very much.